Okay, as we get ready to mix some paint here, I want to just remind everybody, employ proper safety practices. You're going to need a carbon charcoal filter. You're going to want proper eyewear. And you may want to consider something to protect your skin. Now, I just cracked open this can of Rust-Oleum paint here, and I just want to show you why it's so important to make sure that you have a good mixed product. Look at the separation on this. Okay, you can see that a lot of our solids have settled out to the bottom and the resins have floated up to the surface. So we're going to really need to mix this good. Like I said, it is an older can, but it's still very usable. We just have to re-agitate it and suspend those solids back throughout the entire product. Now before we begin mixing paint and spraying, I would like to lay out the scenario for today. In my last video, I covered a couple of suitable mix ratios. Today we're going to be utilizing the 4-3-1 ratio, 4 parts paint, 3 parts reducer, 1 part hardener. These parts that we're spraying need to be on the job and in use as soon as possible. We have a little bit of a secret weapon for that. It's known as Japan Dryer. Now this speeds up dry times tremendously. We will be adding a little bit of this at its specified dose rate to our paint and it will set it off like that. If we're pouring out of the edge of a can, we want to make sure that we don't pour over top of our instructions. It's always a good thing to note. Now, one of the commenters mentioned making a spout out of tape. Alright, that probably could have gone better. I'm going to have to go back and reread that comment. We've got our paint. Now we're going to move to a reducer. This is an actual off the shelf reducer. When you get up into the higher end paints, you get different speed options on your reducer. You can get a slow, medium, and a high or a fast. What that's referring to is the quickness that it will dry. Now we don't really have those options when we're dealing with Rust-Oleum oil base paint and what's available at the local hardware store. Now on here it specifies dry time normally in the 5 to 10 hour range. They also give us a mix ratio of 1 pint to 1 gallon which would be a 4 to 1. We're gonna go 4 to 3. The reason we know we can do that is we have done it and we've had great success doing it. So we're going to put three parts reducer to four parts paint. Off the shelf reducer. Check out my other video if you want to know how to mix with acetone or how to mix with paint thinner. Okay now the one part on here refers to hardener. Hardener as it says right on the front of this hardener increases the gloss increases the overall hardness of the paint and reduces dry time. It's not necessary but it is a really great option. So just a little bit of that. So basically what you would have is seven to one. So if you have seven parts of the product, one part hardener, very little. Now the last component of our mix design here is Japan Dryer. Japan Dryer is a drying agent. It's rated to go into oil-based paints as well as enamels and varnishes. On the can it specifies two to four ounces per gallon. A little bit goes a long way. This is a very useful tool to have during the winter time, during the winter months when paint doesn't like to dry fast, but it's going to be a very useful tool for us today also because our parts need to get out to the job site and be put to use as soon as possible. Three capfuls is one ounce. I'm going to add one capful. That's it. Now this is a step that you do not want to skimp on. Okay, Mix your paint thoroughly. Molecules are binding, chemical reactions are taking place. Do not cut corners on mixing paint. 
Now you absolutely want to filter this before you pour it into your gun. These cone filters are terrific. The other thing is, is you do not want to overmix your paint. You don't want to mix any more than what you can spray in a very short period of time, especially in this summer heat. Okay, keep your unsprayed product covered. Bugs and dirt always find wet paint. All right, now when I walk up to a project like this, the first thing that I'm going to want to do is spray all the really hard to reach areas. By hard to reach, I mean this inside corner up here, these corners here, and the bottom side. Because in order to spray those well, I'm going to need to reach inside of my piece. And if all of these flat, easy to spray areas are wet, I'm going to be leaning into them and I'm going to be dragging my hose across. So whenever I walk up to a project like this, the first thing I'm going to do is decide what the hard to spray areas are going to be and I'm going to spray those first. Now the other thing is, is you have complete control over that fan pattern. If you have a small area, like a corner or a spot where it's hard to get in there, don't hesitate to adjust that fan down to a dot and shoot paint in there. is dry to the touch. It's been about an hour and a half since I laid down that last coat. Surface temperature of our part is 115 degrees. That's way outside of our temperature window, but you can really see how that Japan dryer just sets this stuff off. 